I've been covering batteries and solar generators a bit more on my channel lately, and I get asked a lot, how big a battery should I buy? And of course, that all depends on what kinds of equipment and appliances you need to run, but the most frustrating estimate for me has to be the refrigerator. So here is my low-tech, cheap solution for figuring out how much power my fridge really used. Hey there, this episode of Some Gadget Guy is brought to you by viewers like you. All of the incredible people sharing content across social media and the generosity of my patrons over at patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. More info on those awesome nerds later in the video. Go to a browser, look up power usage for a fridge, and you get wild estimates in general blog posts. Between 350 watts and 1200 watts, you can use between 30 and 80 watts of power an hour. None of that's really gonna help you if you're looking for a battery that can run your fridge for a day. You'll get a lot of helpful tips. Uh, you can check the inside label on a fridge and see the peak rated power draw in amps and volts, and there we can multiply the amps and the volts to get watts. But your fridge might not run at peak power draw for long. Sometimes that's the listed power draw just to start your fridge compressor, and then the compressor settles into a lower energy use state. And that's why this can get so tricky. That's the last kicker, your fridge cycles on and off. So even at its lower power draw, it's not going to do that all day either. Now, Obviously, that's good. You want your fridge to stay cool and stay insulated, and, and when your fridge compressor is off, it's basically using no power, and that should prolong, extend the use of a battery. But all of that data, none of it really helps answer the question, if I wanted to run my fridge for a day, what size battery do I need to buy? The best way to answer this is to look at your fridge, see how it cycles, and then estimate how much power your specific fridge draws. And there are different ways to do this. I feel if you're looking at buying an expensive battery or solar generator, I would highly recommend also buying a watt meter tester with a memory function. You can pick them up cheap. I have a link to one I like down in the description. If you have one of those already, you can skip to the marker in this video where we do the actual math. Otherwise, let's get geeky. I personally did not have one when I was looking at a battery upgrade. I already had a battery. First of all, I just wanted to get a look at how often my fridge actually cycled. So I put a phone in the fridge for a couple hours with the memo recorder running, and I got an audio file that tracked the fridge turning off and on. Now my current refrigerator has two stages of operation. The peak power drop from that label on the inside of the fridge when it turns on is roughly 350 watts. In its higher cooling stage, I'm drawing about a third that, or around 120 watts, and then it can fall to a lower cooling stage, and there I'm pulling about half that again, or about 60 watts. I had a smaller battery with a readout that would tell me what each power level was, but it's easier to find that data if you have the tester. I have three states to track, off, low, and high. And I can look at the sound file to measure how long the fridge is in each state. Measuring the amount of time in each position and dividing by the time of the recording, we can come up with an hourly average. And if your fridge is really regular, I mean, you can take a smaller sampling. Look at the recording for two hours and break that down per hour. My fridge was a lot less consistent. It spends longer in the low cooling state than it does in the high cooling or off. And actually, I might want to check that out. But ultimately, I was able to calculate an average power draw. This is definitely not exact, but it's a closer estimate than any of the online calculators that I found, even the estimates from the manufacturer's website. If you don't have a meter, and you don't have a battery that you can watch the power draw, you can still crib a loose estimate based on the label inside your fridge. I think this is easier on newer refrigerators. The math on mine works out loosely to about a third the peak power listed on the label in a higher cooling mode, and again, half that for the lower cooling mode. You should be able to see if your fridge has multiple modes or if it's just on and off. Or you can learn from my situation and just buy a tester with a memory function. It took so much talking to get here. But now we have a number. My fridge pulls in average of 76 watts. Sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's lower, and sometimes it's off, but we have an overall average of 76 watts. 
There's a super basic formula we can use now to figure out how long an appliance can run on a battery. Now, when we pull power out of a battery cell, it's not a perfect one-to-one -one transfer. There is energy loss compared to how much juice is stored internally. Battery manufacturers largely agree on about a 15% power loss. You take the total power capacity of the battery and multiply that number by 0.85. And that's roughly how much power you'll be able to pull out. My big crate battery has a capacity of 3,072 watt hours. So we multiply that by 0.85 and we get 2,611 watt hours. And now we have that average power draw of 76 watts from the fridge. We divide the watt hour capacity by the power draw in watts, 2,611 divided by 76, and we should get a number that represents hours of operation. We had watt hours divided by watts, and we get the hours. For my fridge, that's 34 hours. On a 3,000 watt hour battery, I should be able to run my fridge for almost a day and a half. That's really encouraging. Even under a worst case scenario, if my fridge were running in the high cooling mode nonstop at 120 watts, I should still be able to keep it going for over 20 hours. Of course, these numbers, are not exact, and I would highly caution to try and make your estimates as conservative as possible. You don't want to crazy overbuy for a battery, but it's always better to end up with slightly better performance than your estimates, and that should help take some of the sting off the eventual degradation folks will face as battery cells age. In an emergency, you don't want to be caught with less actual runtime because you were banking on the best conditions for your battery. So. Do the numbers make sense? D does any of this work? All of this talking that I've just thrown at you. Only way to know is to test it out. If my calculations were correct, the fridge should keep running for over a day, 34 hours with room to spare. And that means we should see about 3% draw per hour on average. Again, just basically dividing the 100% capacity of the battery by 34 hours, about 3%. And what did I see? Creating my estimate on that average power draw got me really close. Actually plugging in and running the fridge, I saw ever so slightly lower battery drain per hour. Overall, in terms of total runtime, I was off by about 4%. My real life runtime was about 4% better than my estimate. I got pretty close and I gave myself a tiny bit of padding. And of course, it's way easier to get here if you just use the proper tools. Now you can do this with any computer or appliance, anything that draws electricity, but I find the refrigerator is one of the more unique challenges because of the way it's designed to cycle on and off. As I'm looking at this home maintenance tech and the critical home backup appliances, I always get precious about the refrigerator as my main benchmark. Not just because it's where I keep all my food, but because my wife and I both have medications we need to keep cool. A fridge becomes a mission critical appliance for us to keep running. And I've been talking to my wife about this. We're gonna buy a little mini fridge soon to store those medications instead. Should be easier to keep running, use a little less power, and we'll keep that mini fridge on a battery backup also. And when we get that fridge, I'll be able to estimate how long a battery can keep that mini fridge running because of the power of basic math. So have you been shopping a battery or a solar generator? Have you found other ways to help estimate how much power you might need? Drop some of those comments below and it could help other people shopping for this kind of tech. As always, thanks so much for watching, sharing, subscribing to the channel. The sharing is really important these days. And I love digging into this kind of tech, even if it's not my main channel's focus on smartphones and tablets. This is the lifestyle stuff that can really help you out in a pinch. The folks who get to see the results of my testing and reviewing first are, of course, my incredible patrons. All of the folks over on patreon.com slash some gadget guy. This list of names. Scrolling by on your screen right now, a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart. These are the folks that are helping to keep the lights on here in the Gadget Lab, and they help drive the direction of the content on this channel. We've been talking about this stuff quite a bit, even some of our mental health surrounding critical home backups and emergency situations. It's a nice little peace of mind when you know you can keep your family comfortable if things go south. They're basically the coolest tech pals in the universe, so I hope you'll check them out. I hope you'll consider joining the community 
at patreon.com slash some gadget guy. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy, basically everywhere. But these days, trying to spend a bit more time on the Mastodons, a little on the blue skis and a lot less so on the Facebooks, Instagrams, threads, and none at all on that dumpster fire site. And I will catch you all on the next video.